life has been a little bit up and down recently. I can't lie, guys. Um, I felt demotivated for a while. I felt um, a little bit uninspired. I'm not gonna lie with the YouTube videos. Um, I just felt this like impending sense of everything being completely out of alignment. I've also been really not enjoying my part-time job. So obviously we have, as a performer and a dancer, you know, that's kind of like what I want to do as my main career. But as I'm starting out, I do have a part-time job to help me make ends meet and, you know, pay for my classes and my training and things like that. But I just, so I work in a pub, I work in a restaurant, haven't really been enjoying it for a while. I've been flirting with the idea since like 2020 summer, especially when we just reopened and we had the Eat Out to Help Out. That was when I, if you worked the Eat Out to Help Out in the hospitality industry, you know what I'm talking about. I was this close to quitting, okay? I was this close to quitting. I don't know why I didn't, to be honest. Um, I was thinking about it, but then, Eat Out to Help Out died and everything kind of went back to normal and I was like it's not too bad you know it's not too bad I got groomed into enjoying it again <laughs> it was really helpful for me while I was training at college because I didn't work there like full time but obviously since I graduated I've been working there a little bit more full time um, alongside you know doing my career stuff um, it's kind of like a side hustle job, if you will. It's one of these jobs, it's a part-time job that pays the bare minimum, absolute peanuts. And I have to work countless hours in order to make something substantial. So I have to trade in huge amounts of my time to make... I mean, it does cover me for the month, but like just, like I can just about cover myself. And you know, I'm 25 and se I'm 25 this year, guys. 25 and I just can't be working on minimum wage anymore I can't be trading in all of my time and energy to a job that frankly makes me quite miserable um I hate hospitality I'll probably do a whole video on why hospitality is abuse and why it is like working in hell I've worked in hospitality since I was 18 I'm 24 years old I've worked in this pub for nearly five years now and I absolutely just need to get out of there and so back to my main point is that it just feels so out of alignment with the life that I want to be living and there's so much content now on YouTube which is great I love watching all of this like becoming a that girl manifesting my dream life content I just absolutely eat that sh up yeah and I've been watching it and I've just been like what am I doing you know what am I doing I need to get my life together I need to be operating on this frequency I need to get out of this misery okay so I've been doing a lot of job hunting I've also been getting on this casting, these casting platforms, which is another thing that I want to talk about in terms of alignment. So obviously as an actor and a dancer, I need to be doing things pretty much most to every day. Um, that is just in alignment with the goals that I want to meet and, you know, small habits that I can integrate that are just going to slowly but surely get me closer to my goal on a daily basis so i've gotten onto these casting platforms i'm looking at different jobs that are slightly lower paid and also jobs that are well paid i'm just applying to all of these different castings mandy.com backstage.com i can do a video about those as well because they're really good tools for actors and dancers would recommend getting on there. Yeah, I've been looking on Indeed, I've been looking at other jobs. I am not going to work in the hospitality industry anymore. Child, I am done. I'm through with the hospitality industry. You have seen the back of me now. I, I want to go into more fitness, PTing, wellness. I'm really interested in wellness, mindfulness, fitness, health, things like that. And I've had some really fun ideas like of what I want to do in terms of going in that direction and I just really want to take this leap of faith. I feel like I've been playing it so safe and staying in my comfort zone and just not doing, not starting that thing that I want to start. Do you know what I mean? So this year, 222, 2022, yeah, 222, I keep seeing that everywhere, represents a fresh start, guys, and our mind is a powerful instrument we can use to shape our lives, okay? These are things that I'm learning. 
You may change your life by focusing on positive thoughts. In numerology, angel number 222 indicates that your optimistic thoughts and visualizations are soon going to come to fruition. So, it's time to take action, because I keep seeing this number everywhere. The year is 222, it's time to just take this leap of faith, let go of any limiting beliefs, negative thoughts, and just go for it. The overriding theme of this month when I was journaling about what I want to get out of this month is to just really feel like I'm living in alignment with what I want and just really commit to my manifestation process. So that's what I'm going to be taking you through with me in this vlog. It's just kind of like my little habits and daily activities and things that I get up to as a result of my manifestations and my hard work and all of the things that I want to come into fruition. I'm hopefully going to show in this vlog. One of my goals is to start doing some modeling work and I need to get a modeling agent. So I'm taking some Polaroid style pictures. I'm getting some fairly neutral poses in a neutral black outfit with a blank background. And I'm going to put those on my profiles and kind of like do some submissions. Today I'm doing pictures. I've got to do a small little self tape. I also need to learn lines for another self tape that I've got to do and I've got to do a little parcel run and pick up some parcels because I ordered some things off Vinted so I might actually do a little mini haul for you there when I go and pick those up. So I've just finished filming um, a self tape that I have been meaning to film this week. Self tapes are something that I've been trying to like attract more of into my life and just like auditions and opportunities like this is something that I feel I should be doing like on a weekly basis even if I'm not getting all of these jobs that I'm doing self tapes for I should still be auditioning and self taping regularly which I felt in 2021 I didn't have enough of and since I've been more proactive with looking for casting and auditions and things like that I've had a couple roll in so I was just filming my self tape um, for this little short film that I've applied for and I just got an email from backstage the other casting platform that I'm on saying that there's a film company that wants me to audition for the role lead role in their short film that they're producing and it's a paid job as well so it's a short paid film and Oh, it just fills me with joy. I'm just so grateful that these opportunities are starting to flow um, easier to me. I'm using lots of affirmations like I attract opportunities, I attract success, I attract abundance. These are all affirmations that I've been using and I can really just feel the energy right now. Um, literally as I finished filming the self tape that I've meant to be doing this week, I've got another self tape due for next week. So I feel like I'm just really like majorly attracting stuff. And today actually, Guys, today, the date is the 2nd of the 2nd, February, 2022, 2222. So, and I've been seeing that number so much recently and today is the day, guys. And the fact that I decided to do my self tape on a day where I'm trying to manifest more film work and auditions and self tapes and things like that, I got another email through. It. This stuff is real, guys. I can't even tell you. Like, you have the power to bring it, bring and invite and attract this stuff into your life. And it's literally just by living in alignment and just doing things that feel aligned with what you want to do and achieve and following your intuition and releasing those limiting beliefs, which is something that I was struggling with last year, I think, quite a lot. And I had to really, like, sit with myself and kind of break down my limiting beliefs and I'm really proud of myself for how far I've come and I'm proud of myself for the work that I've done today and I'm proud of myself for getting a self tape for next week. I've got to do some prep for that, I've got the script through, it's actually quite difficult, um, I've got to do a little bit more practicing with this one, the self tape that I've just done was really quite easy to film and rehearse, whereas this one 
it's harder because it's a lot of stage direction, so it's more like acting without any dialogue, which is harder than acting with dialogue, I think, personally. Yeah, I just thought I'd update you guys. Um, the alignment thing seems to be aligning. Let me know if you've had any small wins for yourself this week, or if there's anything that you feel like you wanted to attract and you've attracted something aligned with what you've wanted to manifest or if it's the actual thing you wanted to manifest let me know exciting day today it's saturday Woo! i normally work at my part-time job on saturdays but today i'm very lucky because i've got the day booked off and i'm going to a very exciting thing which I didn't even know existed until a few weeks ago, okay? The platform that I've been on, mandy.com, where I've been doing my self-tapes, I saw on there that they were advertising um, this thing called Actors Pro Expo, an actors convention, but it's kind of like a convention of resources for actors, so there's things like seminars, um, monologue one-to-ones, career mentoring, networking, things like that. I'm only just starting to get my foot in with um, like screen acting and things like that, and I want to soak up the wealth of information that's going to be there and the networking will probably be very useful for me i'll probably be able to talk to some people who have some projects going on or i can get some advice I wanted to talk a little bit about the expo that I went to yesterday because I did a little bit while I was there but I felt like my brain was still like processing everything that had just happened so I was kind of like waffling and also there was like loads of people walking past me and I just felt very distracted while I was trying to vlog. This is something that I really need to get better at is just like vlogging in public and not letting people staring at me as they walk past bother me. I wanted to talk about some of the things that I picked up there, some of the resources and stalls that I looked at that really caught my attack. There's fluff flying around. Nick Hearn Books, which tends to do like a lot of plays and stuff. So they had a bookstore and I put, picked up three different plays. And the reason I wanted to get these plays is because I do have some plays upstairs that I got years ago at National Theatre Bookshop, but I just kind of picked them up. I didn't really read them. I did read them, but like I didn't really like read the blurb when I picked them up, so I didn't really enjoy the plays, the monologues that were in them were not that great. So I feel like these were a little bit more carefully hand selected. And they all have monologues in them, obviously this is collections of monologues, but they all have monologues in them. And one of the seminars I went to yesterday, and also something that my acting teachers used to say, is to practice doing self tapes and to get like, monologues and fine scenes from you know tv shows and films that you like that is to your casting and practicing doing self tapes like over and over i also picked up these two books so i've got the surviving actors manual picked up my attention straight away but it's the essential one-stop handbook for actors with everything you need to survive and thrive so it kind of has things in it establishing your personal brand and business plan getting great headshots, show reels, voice reels, and a website, dealing with agents, casting directors, and auditions, developing your networking skills, and managing your money. So some of these, personal brand and business plan, I haven't, like I've been trying to work as an actor and dancer for like two years, and <laughs> I, I don't think I've still quite got to grips with like the business side of it yet. This is something that like no one really teaches you. I mean, my college tried to teach that to me, but I still like, it's one of those things that's like, someone can tell you, but like you have to get your head around it. <laughs> I haven't got my head around the business side yet. So I felt like this would be perfect for me. Rule Breakers, Ways Changing the Way Actors Do Business by Valerie Hubbard. This is Rule Breakers teaches professional actors how to create and operate their acting career as a successful business. So this again is like about the more like business side of it. In other words, this book teaches actors how to get out of their own way and claim the career they want. 
Sold. I mean, it was a tenner, so I was like, sold. This is very interesting. So this is a place called Independent Drama Dramatic Action Specialist. So this is essentially training for action scenes, doing things like stage combat, not stage combat, but like combat training. You can actually get qualifications from this place. So um, qualifications in combat, rifle handling, use using different types of guns that you would probably use on set. But yeah, this is like extra skills that you can learn as a side to your acting career, which makes you more castable in a lot more films because you're able to do fight scenes, you can ride horses. I think they do horse riding on here. You can do sword fighting. You can, you know, fight someone hands on, like an extra skill that you can add to your bow and makes you more hireable. So I'm really interested in looking at this. I also discovered this place called Gravy for the Brain. So this is a voiceover industry coaching and mentoring website. Um, voiceover courses, mentoring, um, business mentoring on how to market your voiceover business. This is a really great second stream of income as well for actors if you wanna do it as like a side hustle. So I was looking at this I went to a seminar as well for this because um, I'm interested in doing this as a side. And finally, this is something that really excited me is Stack Studio. But Stack Studio is essentially a self-taping and showreel for actors studio. Um, they do self-tape sessions, they do coaching as well, so like screen acting coaching. They have a career kickstart package where they kind of help you identify your casting type, tailor your CV headshot and showreel. Um, they have a rehearsal space, you can do a showreel with them. There's actor marketing packages, you can do workshops from literally £10, casting workshops. There's so much and I... I just thought, I didn't realize that this, because I was looking for things like this in London and this did not come up on my search. This is what I mean. So if I hadn't gone to Actors Expo, I never would have found out about this. I never would have found out about Gravy on the Brain. I never would have found out about this extra skills place. So I am really glad I went and it was really beneficial. closed at the pub last night so I'm like really tired but it's okay I've got an exciting day ahead it's also the start of another very busy week for me I've got a lot coming up this week but today I'm up early because um my boyfriend <laughs> my boyfriend booked me a whole dance studio to rehearse my Royal Caribbean material in. It was so sweet of him, I'm really excited. It's like a proper studio, not too far from me in like South London. And I'm really looking forward to using it and I'm going to take you guys along with me. Hello everybody, I'm here in the studio that my boyfriend booked for me <laughs> and it's great. Here he is. <laughs> here he is, the last the hour. Hello.
Hello everybody, today is the day I'm filming my Royal Caribbean audition and I'm in the hall, as you can probably hear from the echo, entire hall for myself. Um, I'm really glad I did it, it wasn't that expensive. My time officially starts from 3.30 and it's 10 past 3, so that gives me 20 whole minutes to warm up my body, so that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I've decided to start with the singing first because I didn't want to like dance and sweat and ruin my makeup and then have to redo it. So because my voice was already warm when I came here, I figured I might as well start with the singing. I booked two hours. I was going to use an hour to sing and an hour to dance, but I really don't think I'm going to need an hour to sing. So that gives me a lot more time to dance. But yeah, I've got this little corner setup going on. My tripod and phone setup, I actually have it plugged in because when I got here I had about 5%. So that's why I put myself in this little corner here so that I can actually charge my phone <laughs> while doing my tapes. I've got my iPad set up, my speaker. It's all good, it's all good. tried filming the choreography like lengthways so I'd have plenty of room but the camera wasn't I was going off of the camera so I was <laughs> about right so I decided to do it depth wise and I figured out that that's plenty more room to do this tape so god I'm absolutely dying I'm not gonna lie these combos are killing me off I am officially finished, I'm done. I've got probably like a thousand takes of everything. I'm gonna give myself a couple hours break because um, I find that if I watch the tapes straight away and I've got lots of them to look through, I just go mad. Like, I just watch so many of them and I'm like, I like that one, I like that one, I hate that one, I hate that one and I can never choose. I find that when I have a break or I sleep on it and I go back to the tapes because they have to be submitted tomorrow, I might do it tomorrow, depending on how I feel tonight. But if I go back to the tapes and I've had a little bit of a break, I can look at it with like fresh pair of eyes like, and I feel like not discombobulated by everything I've just done. So oh, I feel very good. I've been in here for a solid two and a half hours. I've gone a little bit over what I said I would, but it's okay, no one's coming in to kick me out yet. So that's that. I'm gonna go home and relax. <laughs>